Well, hello, Richard. Uh, we have uh, in, in, in some weeks a uh, new elections to the European Parliament, and we then we will elect a new commission and a new high representative in, in, in some month. So this is your forecast for the next uh, five years after the crisis about the European foreign policy with new team, the new president of the commission, new president of the European Council, a new, new high representative. I think the crisis has been a, a difficult period for European foreign policy, but I think in a way the EU's passed through perhaps its most difficult period, and there may be just some signs that its performance in foreign policy is beginning to improve. We know that a lot of the basic institutional structures had to be uh, put in place. The EU has done that, and I think gradually it's beginning to map out um, a more effective presence in global um, affairs. Of course, there are many really urgent challenges facing us, not least the situation in the Crimea, to which we still don't have any kind of solutions. But I think looking beyond the European elections, one would hope that the next phase will be one where the EU will come out of the crisis and begin to strengthen its performance in uh, foreign affairs. One, one hopes that the, the votes in the European elections uh, don't give uh, significantly more power to the kind of parties who want the EU to withdraw from the international uh, system precisely at a moment when the EU's own interests require us to be um, developing a more outward-looking foreign policy. Okay, and the, your assessment about uh, Catherine Ashton uh, five years is not so negative. Um, according to this idea that, well, she um, um, invested energy in creating the service, um, well, and there are some successful uh, outputs after, uh, after all, in, in Kosovo, with Serbia, in Iran. Yeah. Well, I think in, in retrospect, one would say it was unfortunate that um, the crisis hit at precisely the moment when the EU was at its weakest institutionally and had to go through these very basic processes of setting up the new institutions for the Lisbon Treaty. I think gradually the High Representative and her team have found a kind of niche area in international politics, offering um, the EU's good offices to mediate between different factions in various conflicts around the world. One will see if that's really enough to play any kind of tangible influence in the current situation in Crimea or some of the countries where the, the conflict dynamics look a lot more intransigent as for example in Egypt. Um, but again I think all that has gradually improved I think the next phase for the EU is to develop its kind of classical tools of high diplomacy, which is what is really needed now um, in Russia and Ukraine, and at the same time begin to map out a slightly more coherent, longer-term vision of the way that the global system is changing and how that impacts the way that the EU should be trying to exert global influence. You mentioned that uh, the result of the election will be key to see, well, uh, uh, how, how, how many people voted to turn out and so well the, the, to what extent the Eurosceptic and anti-European uh, political parties are successful or not. But apart from that, which is obviously important, do you think there is momentum in different member states and particularly in the United Kingdom to think more strategically uh, and more European towards foreign policy and, and globalization in the, in, the, in the short term, or it is really a, a, a very critical moment in which, well, uh, member states are renationalizing yeah. uh, foreign policy? I think the picture is very mixed. I think um, all the bigger member states, uh, to some extent, are pursuing their national interests uh, in a much more kind of ad hoc way through bilateral instruments in a way that is undermining European unity precisely because the constraints of the crisis have been so great. But there are other areas where I think the, the political will to strengthen European unity is increasing. I think member states do recognise that over the longer term, precisely because the EU is coming out of the crisis a little bit weakened, we actually need more unity to defend our common interests uh, in, in global affairs. So I think member states are basically trying to hedge at the moment between their bilateral uh, short-term oriented action and the role that the EU can play in a, in a longer term sense in defending the basic principles that are necessary to underpin European interests. Okay, so we'll see. Thank you very much. Thank you.